epic bait molds is starting to do contests. That's right, this might be your first time hearing it. If you have epic bait molds, you might wanna listen to this because you can get free molds and potentially a free bait from me if you win the contest. I have done, with the stud, now 12 molds with them and it's going to be molds that we collaborated on that the contests revolve around. The first one's gonna be the pud. Whoever makes the prettiest pud gets, I think it's $250 in a gift card for Epic Bait Molds and their website and a wooden bait from me. I'm just gonna make a wooden bait and for each contest, have one ready for the winner. You gotta go to their Instagram and find out all the information about the contest and what bait they're doing it around every time they do a contest and how long it lasts and stuff. So go to the Epic Bait Molds Instagram Follow it, do the contests, cause that's freaking fun. Who does that? Like pretty bait competitions? That's like expo stuff, you know? But this one's all online and it's soft plastics. I thought you might wanna know that. That's cool. I'm glad they came up with that, that's brilliant. Literally just got off the phone, talked about that, and now we're here. I don't know if I'm gonna put, this might go at the beginning of the video actually, so this makes no sense. Let's get on with the video. Unfortunately, Jason's back in Alabama. He's been back there for a couple days now. He brought the mold down. We tested it out. We are beyond happy with it. This thing right here, let me tell you, this is one of our crowning jewels right here. Just the amount of surface area you get with this mold and how much prettiness you can put on one bait. Let me try to give you a justified example right here. Let's make something pretty. Oh, Peter, no. No. As you can see, this looks like a larger version of a mold that we already have out called the Pud. This six inch version is called the Stud. I don't remember if I mentioned that. This is called the Stud. Open pour, six inch, square shaped boot tail with a little finny thing off the back. That, it's different from the Pud because the Pud doesn't have a fin off the back, but we were able to incorporate one and still not affect the action negatively. Okay, let's make this pretty. Okay, we laid down that green and made pretty much bream bars or bluegill bars, sunfish stuff, you know? I think what will look good behind that is kind of like a blue lateral line thing running through that, along with blue on the gills. This is kind of a bluegill. I'm just covering my butt in case it doesn't look like a bluegill. I'm kind of going for bluegill. <laughs> Okay, did a few things. As you saw, I added that orange, but then I also added a super, super light coat of gold over the whole top. See how it's kind of a big glob up there? Gold over all that, transparent gold. There is a silvery, almost, I put some holographic stuff in here. It's not showing up too good because I put so much silver in it with black flake. That's the best description of that color I can give you. After doing all of that painting with the soldering iron, we're just, I've had this heating up. There's something in my mold, what the heck? What even is that? It was just in my mold. Anyway, I'm just gonna dump this in here. Notice how it's on a hot plate, because we're gonna crank up the heat. I set it at max for like 10 minutes and then I shut it off and I made that color and then I just poured it and I'm cranking it back up to max. Uh, max is not a temperature, it's actually 400 degrees. All those layers that we painted need to bind with that one color I just poured. So get the mold really hot, let everything on the outside melt into the core, and then shut off your hot plate, let it cool off. Just getting some shrinkage. When you fill a mold cavity up this size with one color, you're gonna get some shrinkage and you gotta slowly add more plastic so it, it doesn't just, it doesn't get concave on the top. Big reveal time. Big awkward reveal time. 
One sec. Ooh. A nice bright bluegill. Now the only size eye that I have for this bait is going to make it look kind of stupid. One second. All right. <laughs> Not saying that that's not a beautiful dead meat custom eye right there. I don't think this fits the application though. I don't know. It's not too bad. Maybe I'm wrong. Maybe I underestimated that. That looks pretty sweet actually. If you look at the whole picture and that looks pretty spiffy actually. That's not too shabby, but I want to keep going. I feel like I can do better than this. This one's nice because the colors aren't too blown out. Like, I don't know. They all blend pretty nice. Even the orange belly. It's definitely a good, bright, natural thing. Let's just see what else we can do. This one, same process as before with the soldering iron, but I only used black with the detail with the soldering iron. And then I went for a three-tone fire tiger, orange chartreuse green. And I'd say I did that correctly. That is screaming pike right in my face. There, I found an eye for this bait. It's a little oversized, but that is what the eye should be for this bait. And the layers, the colors got a little, they're not straight lines, they're choppy because it met up with the black plastic that was already on the side of the mold. It made the color transitions like wavy and bumpy. Two beautiful baits so far. See you tomorrow, I'm gonna make more. Actually, I'm gonna, uh, I'm gonna bust the smoker out tomorrow, put some ribs on it, maybe something else and just pour studs and smoke meat tomorrow all day it's an all-day thing got to keep an eye on that grill you know that's what i tell my wife morning just a quick peek i know two racks of ribs firing up the smoker like that kind of a waste of charcoal but that's going to be a good supper I bet you guys cannot guess what this is so far. I'll let you know. Sexy snook. <laughs> Bet you never heard of that color scheme. I certainly have not. Got some eyes on it. Literally just a snook because it has a black line down the middle and it's shaped like. The scale pattern on this mold has the just the lines down here and the scales up here. And where they meet follows that black line and it's like a snook because it comes up a little bit. Sexy snook. Very bright. Chartreuse does not show up as much as I wanted, but. That's not easy to do, to get chartreuse to show up behind white really well. Nice bright bait though, with some detail. I have made the decision to fish the stud for a while. We poured those three. Okay, I just saw the water break right there. I'm at the river, and if we can bump into a pikey poo here, that'd just be lovely. Let's go. <laughs> All right, got a treble hook on the belly. Forgot my leaders at home. Let's get a pike.
I honestly expected nothing other than that. But conveniently enough, something came in. Five things came in. And I have been waiting to try this stuff for a long time. We have five different blends of bait plastics, Plastisol. I already know like the properties and how this Plastisol works. It's pretty freaking good. But this is what I'm most interested in is the extra hard salt water blend. And I wanna see how it acts with a pud tail if it makes a difference, which I'm sure it's gonna make a difference. Like I'm hoping that it adds springiness to the to this little section right here and gets that tail to just So we're gonna make a couple. Real quick, I'm gonna just throw this mold on the hot plate and just do triple laminates and then test. Okay, that's kind of amazing. There are no bubbles in that. This is super, super hard plastic apparently. Usually you get bubbles with that. <clears throat> Smells a lot worse than dead on. Unless you like the smell of diesel additives, because that's what it smells like. Could be a thing for some guys, I don't know. What's the temperature of that? 382, I overheated it and there's no bubbles. What the heck? Look how clear that is. That's 382 degrees with two heat ups. Doesn't need vacuumed. Okay, sounds good. One sec, let's get to pouring. This is a highlight red with a little bit of pearl white in it. Perfect. That's very pretty. I wanted something bright on the top so I can see the action in the water and the difference. All right, I'm gonna whip up a few more because I like to have a variety of colors while I test baits. I just pulled this mold apart. This plastic's kind of surprising me. I just barely I just barely laid some red in there. And the belly's translucent enough to where it just, it bleeds through. And I did this thing where I tried to come in with darker colors. The, the top was still hot, but like just dip a little bit of uh, black Plastisol in there. I don't know, it added something. I should have done more of that, I think. Purdy, purdy. Last one. You can tell this is stiff plastic. The molds are a lot harder to open. Chartreuse belly. I tried to drip a bloodline into it. Yeah, let's just take it all the way out. Like a translucent, drippy. Like while the bottom color was still hot, I was dripping red down into it. So it shows up more in some spots than others. Over here, it's more of a line. Dang it. It did it in the head. But chartreuse belly, bloodline, and green. Something bright so we can see it. Well, it just so happened to have snowed three inches last night, so we'll be testing... Hey, you can't even see. We will be testing the saltwater studs and the icy tundra today. <laughs> I got snow on my reel. It's freezing out, but I got an epic stud tied on. And we're at the river, just on a boat ramp. Let's see what we can see. That kicks way harder. Look at that tail. Look how aggressive that thing is. That's an impressive action. Oh, it's cold right now. Ouch. But look at this action. If a bait called a stud was ever going to have an action, that's it right there. I seriously cannot take much more of this. It feels like my heart is shivering. But a pike would be pretty cool. <laughs> Who am I kidding? Let's go home. I am extremely glad to know that that saltwater blend plastic from Bait Plastics works the best in this bait though. You know, craw tube from dead on and stuff. 
probably works just fine as well because we tested that already so so it's not a probably anything from craw tube to salt water use that for your studs fellas and that's a success because in the winter here we don't have to catch fish for videos to be successful merely finding out that saltwater blend plastisol works best for this bait is success <laughs> where to get this mold is linked below the epic bait molds website of course and that is the end of this video remember if you want to join the contest for the pud who can make the prettiest pud go to epic bait molds instagram all the details are there on to the next bait that's cool. It's a little oversized, but could be a thing for some guys. I don't know. Sexy snook. That'd just be lovely. All right. Just a quick peek. And I'd say I did that correctly. Brrr.